Well, my message is not as short as that. So I will try to hurry up um, as best I can. But uh, I would like to say thank you to Pastor and Brother Caleb for doing this. I always enjoy uh, the team takeovers. Um, I love preaching, and I take it as a, uh, a privilege to be able to preach. So thank you, guys. Um, turn your Bibles to Psalm 139. Psalm 139. If I had to title this message, I would title it as God Knows You. Um, I think it is a very uh, humbling and encouraging thought to think that God knows me. Uh, Just to think that, you know, the God who created the universe, who is in charge of everything, who has the liberty to do everything, knows me. He, he knows me. He, loves, he knows me. He knows you. He knows all of us. Um, it's an encouraging and comforting thought. Uh, if you found your place, say amen. amen. I'll begin reading at verse number one. It says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsinning and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, it is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Let's go to verse 17. How precious also are the thoughts, are thy thoughts unto me, O oh God, how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Verse 23 says, Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. You know, we talk about a passage that can get you emotional. I mean, those are beautiful truth. Uh, verse 1, O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. So, I don't know about you, but I have never searched for something without a purpose. You don't just go searching for nothing. You search for a reason. You have a specific purpose for searching. Um, it's, always, it's always specific. Uh, God is searching us for a specific reason. He's, you know, he's the God of the universe, but he's searching for you. Um, it says, Thou hast searched me and known me. Um, typically, we don't search for things that we don't care about. I mean, we, you know, if someone cares about something and we care about them, then we can help them because it has some sort of value to us. But we never go looking for something that we really have no interest in. Um, God is searching for us to know us because he has an interest in us, because he cares about us individually. Uh, verse number two says, Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Uh, God knows your habits. He knows your routines. He knows the times when you're feeling uh, energetic and ready to go serve God and just face the world. And he knows when you're feeling lazy and sinful and whenever you're making excuses. And he knows whenever you're like, ah, I'm a little too tired. I'll, I'll skip church today. I'll skip visitation. He knows your habits, and he knows the times where you're, when you're on fire. I mean, he knows everything about you. Uh, it says, thou understandest my thought afar off. As a young teenager, a growing teenager, um, this is definitely something that a lot of uh, men, boys, struggle with, is um, thoughts. I mean, you can just be sitting, doing the most random thing, and just have a thought, and you go, wow, what in the world? Yeah. Why did I just think that? I mean, you know, it happens to all of us. And it's one of those things where it's like, well, now you have to say, well, okay, well, Lord, forgive me for that because that was a sinful thought. Right. Like, I don't know where that came from, but God knows you were going to think that. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, he understands and knows all of our thoughts long before we ever have them. Uh, verse number three says, Thou compassest my path and my lying down. Thou art acquainted with all my ways. So I wanted to make sure that I understood what that word compassest means. So I used the good old-fashioned good old fashioned KJV dictionary and um, looked it up. And um, so in this particular verse, compassist, uh, it means stretch, reach, extent, the limit or boundary of space, and the space included. 
apply to time, space, sound, etc. It took me all of about three seconds before I got like really emotional and realized that God is all around us. Yeah. He's in our time. He's in our space. He's in what we hear. He's in everything. Yeah. He has compassed. He has engulfed himself in all of our ways. He is a, he's acquainted with all of our ways. He knows who you are. Yeah. He knows what you do. He knows, he, he knows all your quirks. I mean, he knows everything about you, and he's, he's all around you. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, verse 4, For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest all, all together. God knows your vocabulary. Mm -hmm. He knows what you say when you're in church, when you're being super spiritual. Mm -hmm. He knows what your vocabulary is when you're at home, mm -hmm. when you're more relaxed. Yeah. And he knows what your vocabulary is when you're out at work, whenever, you know, not a lot of people know you. You can be whoever you want to be. He knows your vocabulary. He knows who you are. He knows what you say. Um, number five, verse five, it says, Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. God has completely surrounded us. He is encompassed around us, and his hand is over us, protecting us. Um, all of these thoughts are incredibly comforting thoughts to me personally. Just know that, that my Lord and Savior is around me, and he's in everything about me. He knows every single thing about me. Um, I have nothing to complain about. I mean, there is, there is nothing here that I should complain about. Hebrews 13.5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee or forsake thee. My God is always with me, right. every single step of the way. Yeah. And that is something that you can count on for the rest of your life. Yeah. I mean, no matter what, he's there with you. Uh, Philippians 2.14, it's still in the Bible. Um, it says, Do all things without murmurings and, uh, murmurings and disputings. Um, I mean, what do you have to complain about? I mean, really? You know, Brother Caleb brought up a, a really interesting point in teen class that I had never knew. Um, it was that more Israelites died because of complaining in the wilderness than they did because of war. Yeah. So why do we sit around and complain about everything we can find? I mean, we don't like, we don't like the color something was painted. Right. Oh, big deal. Yeah. I mean, God is still on the throne. Yeah. He still died for you. He still loves you. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing you can complain about. I mean, really. The Israelites were brought out of bondage. They were being fed heavenly food. Um, there were birds who were just giving themselves to the Israelites. Um, and they were being led to a land that was promised to them. And yet they still found something to complain. Yeah. And yet us Christians living in modern day America where we have the liberty to yeah. serve God and worship and all these modern amenities where we get to drive places and, you know, food. We have, we have nothing to complain about. I mean, anything we can find is absolutely petty, and it's not worth it, and it's sinful. Um, I mean, that's just, that's the truth of it. I have been guilty of complaining a lot, and um, to be honest, I'm tired of complaining. Uh, I mean, it gets you nowhere. It does nothing. It accomplishes absolutely nothing. Complain about whatever you want, but it's going to do that. Yeah. Zero. I mean, there's no point in it. Um, I lost my train of thought. Um, Uh, the Israelites always found something to complain about, but we have nothing. God is still merciful. His, his mercies are new every morning. Uh, we're going to fail. We're going to mess up. We're going to do all these things, yet God still loves us. He knew that we were going to do that long before we ever did. Uh, he knew what we were going to think against God. He knew what we were going to question God, but yet he still loved us, and he still gave mercy to us. Uh, verse 6 says, Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. I question God a lot uh, because I don't understand. Because my ways are not his ways. And his thoughts are not my thoughts. Uh, things happen. Uh, God allows things to happen. They're in his plan, and I don't understand it. Uh, I get confused. You know, I'm like, wow, you know, God, I really feel like that was where I needed to be. I felt you in this situation. And God moved me on. I don't understand it. But I'm thankful that that knowledge is too wonderful for me. Yeah. I'm glad that I cannot attain unto it. Um, I mean, his, his ways are higher than our ways. No matter what I think is better, it's not. God is always, God is always doing what's best. His ways are always best. Uh, we'll just, 
I'll say I. I have to swallow my pride and accept that because that's a hard thing to accept. When you just go, yep, that happened to me and, you know, it's in God's hands. I had no control over it. It was not my decision in the first place. This is not my life. It's God's. Why would I complain about something when I don't know the end? God does. Um, it's better to just accept that God has in control and just accept the fact that uh, we may not understand, but we still believe. I mean, I don't understand what God is, where God has taken me and why he does the things, but I believe in him. I believe he has a plan, and I know he's taken me somewhere. Um, I mean, that should come for us without any doubt. Um, my second point is that this has character. Um, this psalm reveals a lot of character about David. He's, he's not only uh, stating a fact that this is God who is who knows me, who is encompassed around me, but he's, he's embracing it. Um, verses 7 through 11, he's uh, speaking about the uh, omnipresence of God as well. Um, he says, Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I free, flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Uh, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. So no matter if we're... I mean, the highest parts of the sky, the lowest parts of the earth, God is still with us. He's still leading us. He's holding on to us. No matter where we go, he's always there with us. Um, so this reveals character about David because he's acknowledging it he's, and he's embracing it. Um, an interesting thought I had is I wonder how many of us would be 100% fine if somebody accompanied, accompanied me every day. For an entire week. I mean, I had no alone time. None. I mean, you know, maybe that makes you a little uncomfortable, but I mean, what do we have to hide? I mean, we shouldn't have anything. Um, David is, he's saying, you know, here, here's my life. He is opening up and just saying, you're already here. I might as well accept it. Um, there's, yeah, he's, he's saying, um, his life is, he's, he's opening up. Um, and interesting is people people define character as who you are when nobody else is around. But I mean, you're never truly alone because God's always with you. Um, so I think a better definition of that is character is who you are when it's just you and God. Yeah. I mean, it's true. Um, God already knows everything about you. He knows your character, but you're the one. I mean, making it. Right. Um, I think. Pastor had even mentioned something uh, a few weeks ago. But if you knew everything about me and I knew everything about you, we would look at each other differently. I mean, we would. Because there's things that some of us have done where it's like, wow, that is disgusting. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's true. I'm not, I'm not talking about like, nasty. I'm talking about sin. Yeah. I mean, we all are. We've all done something. Yeah. Um, I know as, as a child, when you do something to, and your parents look at you, and if they have an, a uh, disappointed look, <coughs> the, their face changes. Right. You can see. I mean, there's a changed thought process. You know, whether it's uh, disappointment, embarrassment, guilt, anything like that, there's always a changed thought. There's a changed look. Um, same can be true with spouses or anything like that. Uh, but no matter how many times we sin, no matter how many times we do these awful, nasty, disgusting things, God never changes how he looks at us. Uh, verse 17. It says, How precious... Also are thy thoughts unto me, O oh God, how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, there are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Amen. Out of all the things we do, everything we say, everything we think, God never changes how he thinks about us. Precious thoughts. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've never tried to count sand. Um, I, would, I would say it's basically innumerable. Um, God is just constantly thinking precious thoughts about us and towards us. Um, again, it is, it's too wonderful. It, it blows my mind to think, yeah, wow, I make so many mistakes, yet God just constantly precious thoughts. Um, it's amazing. I love it. Um, my, my last point is point number three, the psalm has a call. Uh, verses 23 through 24 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart, Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me 
and lead me in the way everlasting. David is, he's surrendering. He's surrendering his I would say his privacy, but he's surrendering his life to, to open it. Right. I mean, everything about his life, he is saying, search me. Mm-hmm. He's, he's not only just stated that God has already searched him, but now he's asking God to search him. He's saying, I know you've already done it. I know you are doing it, but please, search me. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And he's saying, I mean, was my motive right? Mm-hmm. Try my heart. I mean, is, is, is the reason that I'm doing this, is it right? Is it righteous? Uh, know my thoughts. I mean, you can be doing something right and have a bad thought behind it. I mean, it's true. Right. Um, and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Now, church, who's, whose way is everlasting? God's. He wants, he wants to be searched to be cleansed of any wicked way so that he can be led in God's way. Um. It's, it's humbling just to think that this is what God wants. He's already searched you. He already knows you. All he wants is you to surrender. All he wants is for you to say, search me, God. Is there anything in me? Um, I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you can be, like, half-hearted. You can be like, yeah, search me, God, but mm, don't search that area. Like, search all these areas. Don't, don't search my heart motive behind that. Because, yeah, I did something great, and look how great that was, but don't look at the motive. Don't look at the thoughts. Like, look at these thoughts right here, but don't, don't do those. No, we have to give all of our thoughts. We have to give our entire heart. It's not, Christianity is not half-hearted. Amen. It is whole-bodied. Yeah. You're either in or you're out. Yeah. Like Nate said, being lukewarm, you spit it out because you don't want it. Nobody wants lukewarm. They want all in. God would much rather you just be cold or hot. Yeah. Not, not an in-between. We have to give all of ourselves. We have to let God search all of us and know all of us. We have to be willing and humble. Um, lead me in the way everlasting. We have, we have a goal, and that's to be led in, in the Lord's way, to be led in the ever, everlasting way. Um, uh, as I do close, um, I would challenge you to examine your life as well. Um, see if there is any wicked way. Um, look at every part of your life and just think, would I be okay if God was with me right here as I'm doing everything? As I'm, when I'm alone, when I'm doing anything, would, it, would I be fine if God was right here, right next to me, the whole time? Um, the second challenge would be to look at other Christians the same way God looks at us. Um, I'll be honest, that's, that's hard to do. Because maybe some of us do know something about another Christian, and we aren't looking at them the same way. Um, God is he's always our example. And if he's just constantly thinking precious thoughts toward us, we need to be thinking precious thoughts towards other Christians as well. But yeah, there's something that I know about people in here. It's like, yeah, all right, that's not great. It doesn't change how I should look at them. I'm the same as they are. We're both sinners saved by grace that God never gave up on, that God continually renews his mercies for both of us. I mean, we're no, we're no different. Um, we don't have to agree with everything that all Christians do, but like I said, we're all the same. And I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't matter what they do or how they do things or the manners about them. They're still a Christian. They still love God, and God loves us the exact same. Nobody is above. Yeah. Uh, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. Yeah. So, um, there is a lot in this psalm, and I, like, skipped a lot of it. Um, but as I close, let's, um, let's do our best just to apply this to our life as we go forward. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, come to your prayer. I just thank you for this opportunity that I've had to open your word. I would pray that you would uh, just help your word not to return void, that uh, someone would glean from this, Lord. I pray that you would uh, just be with the rest of the evening. I pray this in your name. Amen.